All right, people, we're at Monday, week two, February 1999. Uh, before we started what happened last week, I thought I'd make a mention. I haven't really been doing the, uh, like, highlighting superstars or, you know, saying what happened in Raw real life. I've did a couple of them recently, but uh, we're, I'm not really going to do them for, until we start TW 2016. After, you know, whenever that comes out, or after WrestleMania 15, whenever I start after WrestleMania 15, because we're trying to get through book WrestleMania 15 next week here, and before I get back to school and start getting real busy, and I bet you guys like it when I'm louder and I can be more talk and a little more animated, even though it feels weird still, like, you know, it's kind of like weird talking to your headset and no one's really there responding, no interaction. So, you know, I just like to make sure make sure to note that it's just going to be the episodes and we'll keep our uh, track against WCW 14 weeks, 61-24, 14 week win streak, it's 61 WF, WCW 24, which means we've been doing this for 85 weeks of keeping track. Alright, so last week we saw Stone Cold and Undertaker confront each other, these guys have been feuding, the feud died down a little bit because Stone Cold and Vince started going back up. And then Taker kind of got lost in the shuffle there with Stone Cold and Vince, which happens because, I mean, Vince and Stone Cold such a great rivalry. But he came back and he says, Stone Cold, I'm coming for you and I'm going to take you out and I'm going to take the title shot. So tonight, Undertaker's in the main event. Uh, it's, I'm worried about the main event here. We might break the 90 rating win streak. Eddie Guerrero uh, defeated Owen Hart by DQ when Lance Storm, Matt Bloom attacked Eddie. So his... Uh, his nephew Chavo came in and made the return, saving Eddie from any more further damage. Road Dogg and Batista definitely became number one contenders after, you know, two solid performances, APA last week. Excuse me for a sec. And then Un-Americans a week before that. Uh, Shane McMahon, Vince, and The Rock all made fun of the Kane. Kane's turn and face. He's looked at as a freak. So we're having, you know, the cocky, arrogant McMahons and cocky, arrogant Rock make fun of him for losing. The Godfather lost again to one of the Un-Americans, thanks to interference. Uh, Gold Dust is going to return. We saw Taz unofficially but officially debut, costing Chris Candido a match for Billy Kidman. Chris Candido takes on Billy Kidman for European title tonight. Triple H defeated Kane in a classic match after X-Puck interfered, and then Mankind and the Rock brawled in a match. So let us kick it off with, I think, Rock and Mankind. All right, so Rock and Mankind pretty much have an in-ring segment where they agree to last man standing match. We're taken from real life again, except this time the title's not who I don't even know who the champion is in real life this time. They kind of messed it up. So you know, Mankind's still the champ. The Rock obviously has a corporation backing him, so he can get a title shot whenever he wants, really. So it's gonna be a last man standing match: Mankind versus The Rock. Right, we go backstage where APA is chilling out, drinking beers, playing poker. When Bradshaw comes in with his hose and says, Look, I got me some money. I need you guys to help me out tonight. Really appreciate APA makes a deal with them. And, you know, then APA and the Godfather all walk off, which I think would be a pretty cool thing to do because, you know, the APA, beer drinking, protection agency, this is the first time they've been really hired. So we have the Godfather, the pimp. Uh, you know, paying with home money, which I think's funny. I mean, it fits the 90s at the time. From there, we get Godfather versus Val Venus. Val Venus loses after Farouk and Bradshaw interfered. Bradshaw would distract him. Val, uh, Farouk would get in the ring, hit that brutal ass spine buster. Farouk might have my favorite spine buster. He just picks the dude up and just throws him on the ground. And then Godfather picks up the victory. If you notice, Val Venus is the one who's taking the losses for Un Americans. So we're going to turn that into a storyline down the line. Storyline down the line. That sounded weird. All right, from there we go to Brian Pillman's in the ring. Goldust music hits. Brian Pillman starts freaking out like, no, no, I can't believe what I'm seeing. Goldust comes out. He's like freaking out like, no, like the blonde wig, the makeup, everything. And then <clears throat> he uh, he comes in, gets in the ring, and then somehow he pulls out head, hits Brian Pillman with head, you know, takes off the wig and stuff, and we realize it's uh. Al Snow dressed as Goldust, and he beats up Brian Pillman with head. I think he'd have head, like, behind them, you know, strapped in. Somehow they figure out a way to do it. You know, Goldust goes, like, does that. He, Al Snow goes, do the Goldust thing, where he goes, <sighs> like that thing. 
It's so creepy and so great at the same time. He like goes and does it, and then he like pulls out the head, hits Brian Pillman with it. I think it's a good way to hype Brian. Brian Pillman freaked out over Goldust. Like, no, you're fired. No, no, it's terrified. And then it's a good way to continue Allison over Brian Pillman, which is for the Intercontinental Title. Can't lose track of that. Here, Lance Storm versus Chava Guerrero ends on Lance Storm cheats to win. It's pretty much. Uh, Matt Bloom would interfere, and we're going to see Lance Storm, Matt Bloom versus Chava Guerrero, and Eddie Guerrero at the next pay-per-view. Here, Batista and Rodel cut a promo on Imog and Ken Shermark saying, we never lost our titles, guess shouldn't be champs, you never pinned us, we're going to beat you guys this Sunday. Basic tag team, baby face, going for the title promo. From there, we go to Corporation versus the Headbangers, Road Dog was on commentary, and, uh, ooh, Jerry Lauder and Road Dog, future, uh, you know, announcing partners. Corporation defeats the Headbangers pretty uh, quickly, and they, uh, ooh, that's good, I like that. They, uh, you know, just win, and then I think after the match, no, they don't get attacked. After the match, you know, another tag team feud. Marion Barton agree to have a match with the Road Warriors, pretty much they trade words, talk shit to each other. And the story, I almost ruined, uh, it's called, uh, what's it, uh, the ending. The ending to this is going to be different, and... We're really going to start getting legs behind this storyline after this, um, what's called, pay-per-view. This pay-per-view is so weird because it's so transitional. Like, after Royal Rumble, you want to go straight into the title match, but you can't just not have a title shot or a title match after, you know, in between pay-per-views unless it makes sense. Just, it's a weird pay-per-view. Part of me wishes it went Royal Rumble Mania, but then that kind of, you know, the extension in WrestleMania, 13 or 12 weeks, instead of, like, 8 I, I like it too. It's bittersweet. From there, we get a Billy Kidman versus Chris Candida. Chris Candida makes defense number five European title after he defeats Billy Kidman clean. No Taz. After the match, who comes on the ring? Taz. He comes on the ring. Taz mission. You know, Kurt Hennig gets in the ring. You know, suplex. Suplex is on the ring. Puts Chris Candida. Suplex, then Taz mission. Chris Candida taps to end the, sh to end the segment. And Austin, let, or, uh, Taz lets him go. One Z Taz. After match, uh, after that match, we got Rikishi versus Edge. Rikishi wins here, uh, and kind of got lost in the shuffle. Edge and uh, his brood brethren, brood brethren, uh, took out Two Cole at Royal Rumble. Rikishi, their ally, is coming for him, so he is gonna take on the brood versus Rikishi at No Way Out. This is a good way to show have Rikishi show dominance, and a good way to have. Uh, the brood get heel heat by having a three on one advantage no matter how big Rikishi is. Here Shane McMahon says, you know what Kane, you're going to prove yourself so you're facing X-Pac and Triple H at No Way Out. Uh, we're starting to have Shane get involved with Kane and X-Pac and Triple H. Contemplating having Kane and X-Pac, contemplating you know doing something different, like maybe Shane tagging with Kane versus X-Pac and Triple H. I don't know. I mean, it's definitely not going to be for the European title. I, I like having the European title mean something, not just on Shane. No McMahon's going to have a title. None. It's just not going to happen. So don't expect that. Hate that. All right, and then Stone Cold versus Undertaker. Uh, Stone Cold and Undertaker. Undertaker challenges Stone Cold to a match. Stone Cold says, yeah, you're damn right. I'm going to kick your ass, blah, blah, blah. And they would end up brawling a little bit. You notice the 100 ratings, the stats in this game, you know, uh, Everyone who I have go really long, like Stone Cold. Very, everyone's momentum's pretty high right now. The company's doing really good right now. And so you, guys like Stone Cold, Undertaker, Rock, Mankind, Kane, Triple H, any others, Vince McMahon, all are putting up like 190 plus, 95 plus, you know, ratings for angles. It's because their momentum's very high. All those guys I said are really good and something like Kane, very over pretty charismatic the rock very over good in the mic where he's at like an 80 now very charismatic stone cold most over very charismatic very good in the mic undertaker very over very good in the mic mankind probably the best mic guy in the game and very over vince very over good gimmick everyone has a good gimmick so that's why i keep on getting 100 ratings uh i could show you guys the top guys after the show, just so, cause I don't know if you guys think I'm cheating or not, because I'm not. 
I haven't padded anyone's stats in a while. I, I think I bumped up Batista from when he joined DX because that's just a huge bump. Like, or in a MAGA, I did that. So when a MAGA joined uh, Vince McMahon as a uh, muscle in the corporation, that's a huge natural bump just because that's a rub. So you can't. That game doesn't do that. The game it's hard to get higher ratings from angles in the game. So I think I jumped Umaga to like a 40 popularity. And then when Batista uh, debuted and joined DX, you're aligned with the hot, one of the hottest acts in the company, and you just became you know one of the hottest acts of the company. So naturally, I think your popularity should go up. So I think I bumped him up to 40, then put him in a couple matches and got it to 52. And that month, I could show you that, but I'm not going to. But yeah, pretty much those are only two times I can remember padding anyone's stats. Uh, thinking out loud, thinking, thinking, thinking. No, I really haven't. I that's the only two times I can remember off the top of my head. So pretty much, yeah, I bumped up in Maga and Batista. But you think about it, if we start the corporation now, it's January. So if you have Vince, Triple H, and Stephanie. If you bring up Baron Corbin to be their new guy, their new muscle, he's going to be pretty damn popular pretty quick. So, same with Batista. If you have, let's say, the Bullet Club. Let's say, we don't know. It's January 10, 2016. The Bullet Club is heavily rumored to be signed. WWE's teasing it on social media and stuff on their, uh, it's called a website. So... Not many people, Fairweather fans, know who Doc Gall or know who Luke Gallows, Carl Anderson, Shinsuke Nakamura. I think every wrestling fan probably heard of the name AJ Styles at least once. So like people are like Carl Anderson. So just giving that little rub from WWE name bumps them up. I think that WWE guys when they're on the show, just on the show in general, they should be at least a 30 popularity in the game. Like the lowest rated guys I have now are Edge and Christian because they just debuted. They're at like 25, but we're getting them over and they're gonna get over. Pretty soon, I'm not gonna bump. I think I bumped. No, I didn't bump them up at all. They were like at 15, 20 when I signed them from being uh, indies. So yeah, pretty much. If I think you're on WWE TV, you should be at least a 30. Cause let's see, WWE we have three hours raw, two hours SmackDown. That's five hours primetime TV a week. They're averaging two and a half. Well, for SmackDown last week got three million viewers. I think and Raw always gets around two and a half, three million. So you got three million people watching you in the game. Like, all right, let's let's see. He's Slater, and for the current mods, he's at like a forty popularity, and he's seen in three million different homes. Uh, compared to who's a different guy? Who's a different guy? Who's a different guy? Let me think of Indy. Uh, no, not Cheeseburger. Cedric Alexander for ROH. Uh, he's probably around the same, no, depending on the mod, set, guys like Cedric Alexander would be around 40, 30 to 40, which I don't have a problem with, but I think if you're in WWE, you're instantly at 30, you're instantly there out of 100, because, I mean, let's say 100 is everyone knows you, let's say 50, like everyone, every wrestling guy knows, every, I think that's the casual fans, like, or not even casual, like the step below casual, fair weather fans, like everyone knows who Stone Cold Steve Austin is. We'll do current times. Everyone knows who John Cena is. And then everyone would know who Randy Orton is. Or everyone knows Triple H and Undertaker and Brock Lesnar. So those are four guys who'd be 100. Then you have guys who are like, okay, casual fans, no, and like the step below. And then that would be guys like, I think Roman Reigns, Randy. Daniel Bryan, maybe not Daniel Bryan. Here, I got lost. So the hundred, like the ninety plus popularity would be John Cena, Triple H, Undertaker, Brock Lesnar. The guys with like eighty popularity would be Daniel Bryan, Randy Orton, Roman Reigns, Seth Rollins. Guys with like seventy five, Sheamus, Dean Ambrose, Big Show, uh, Kevin Owens. Maybe Kevin Owens a step below that, but you know what I mean, like. Tier like main eventers in WWE 80, upper mid carders 70 to 80, mid carders 50 to 70, and then lower carders 40, 50, 
NXT guys, 20 to 35. Unless you're an indie guy and made a name for yourself, I'd put you up to 45. Like Sami Zayn should be 45. Finn Baylor should be 45. But then guys like Keith Slater, Bo Dallas, Curtis Axel, and like those are the top three. Should be like a 35 to 40 range. Because you know who they are. Like, okay, that guy, you know, Usos would be in the 50 to 70 range. New Day would probably be in the 70 range. Xavier Woods would be in the uh, 40 to 50 range, or 50 to 60 range, in my opinion. Because, I mean, Big Kofi's been around forever, and Big E's very recognizable with how huge he is. So that's my rent in the game. I think 100 is the mainstream people know you. 80 is like, or 90 is uh, mainstream knows you. 80 is your main eventer players. 70 to 80 is your upper mid-carders. 69 to 50 is your mid-carders. And then it ranges from there with everyone else. So that's my rant about the game popularity. I don't know how, I can't find an explanation on it because like, the, I don't know, I think it's, have a 100 rating every show with these guys, okay, I get it. So, you know, I'm trying just to put it in words and compare how you, I think it is rated. All right, so the main event is Undertaker versus Ahmed Johnson. Maybe I shouldn't have had Undertaker or Stone Cold then face Ahmed Johnson. They have a hell of a match. Uh, so I'm, I think I'm going to get the 90 rating here. I had a lot of high angle, high, uh, angle ratings, so scary. And then I don't know if there's anything after it. Nope, no. Aw, oh, shit. Damn it. Damn you, Ahmed Johnson. You son of a bitch. Maybe I, I, I should have had Undertaker after and Stone Cold after that. So I should have did, but uh, 88 rating, WCW got this last week. I think we we're at a 14 week win streak, 61 to 24, and we get it again. 15 week win streak, we're dancing, and uh, it's 24 to uh, 62. 15 week win streak, highest streak first WCW yet, not including pay per views. Yeah, Vader, Rick Steiner lost. The streak's over. Okay, now he has lost before, but it's the first time he lost in a while. Uh, Chris Jericho won. Woo. So, that's going to be it for this episode. I hope you guys, you know, thought, listened to my rant about the popularity in the game. Actually, you know, here, I'll go show you. Excuse me. We're going to filter. I don't know why I said excuse me. All right, we'll do a star. Because, yeah, that's going to be. Okay, well, like. Here's Vince McMahon, so that's me, the user avatar. His microphone skills and stuff, that's pretty accurate. He's pretty over. He got over from announcing, and then we made him a character, and he got over. Look, his momentum, 93. Triple H, momentum, 93. Mid-popularity, mid-80s. Undertaker, 99 momentum. Holy shit, I didn't know his popularity is that high. The Rock, 890 popularity. Look at his momentum, 97. Mankind, 92 popularity, 99 momentum. I didn't think Ken Shamrock is this over. Uh, Kane, 90 popularity, 73 momentum, but he still has high momentum. Here's, I told you he's turned heel. We got to turn him fast or they're going to turn against it. I feel, I fear they might already. All right, JR, he's the announcer. That's like the cap for announcers. And Jerry Lawler, same thing. Love that picture, King. Chris Candida, I told you guys we got him over. I didn't bump any of his, uh, what's called over. He was here and then we we're dropping him out, dropping him out. Joined Kern Hennig and, uh, yeah, April, and then it went May. I don't remember. I thought he... No, we put him at Kern Hennig. When is it WrestleMania? Mar it's March 4th. I don't think I had Kurt signed. I think we did it raw after um, Mania. Then we started pushing him more and more. Oh, King of the Ring. Okay, he won King of the Ring here and started it here. That's why we got his stats over. He was defeating like job guys here. And then, yeah, you see, I got him fairly over pretty fast. I didn't cheat. Yeah, and then we'll show you Batista. All right, yeah, we'll get back here. Brian, Brian Pillman, you know, if it wasn't for drugs, he'd be the most over guy in the company. And then Stone Cold Steve Austin Momentum, 100. What's uh, called it? Uh, popularity, 96. All right, and we're here. We'll show you Batista just because, you know, I don't know. I felt like I cheated with that, but, you know, I could have just had Batista squash like the headbangers 20 times. So here, he is at 10 popularity, and then this is where my developmental territory is, so he's pretty popular there. And then I bumped him up to 40, and then him and Road Dog team together, they took on uh, D.Lo Brown, the Godfather, a couple times, and they won. And then they, uh, right here, 
they weren't doing much of anything. But right around here, they were, you know, facing new nation domination. I think they're still facing nation here, so they capped. Got one after titles, and then sticking ever since. So yeah, I bumped them up to 40 because I figured, like I was saying earlier, okay, you get aligned with, you know, DX. Let's see, Triple H main eventer, X Pac upper mid Carter, Road Dog mid Carter. So we're gonna debut this guy. Where's he gonna be? He's getting rubbed from main eventer, upper mid Carter, mid Carter, and the act itself would be a main event act. So and doesn't put him in main event because he's a fresh new guy. So let's put him around 40, because that's where it is. And who's a 40? I think Headbangers. Or no, Scotty Too Hotty. That's it. Scotty Too Hotty. You know, he is like, I think if you put Batista with DX, he'd instantly be more popular than Scotty Too Hotty. Because just that one episode of Raw, he would have been bumped up. I'm trying to think of an uh, example. No. Uh. Let's see, let's see. An example of a guy just instantly getting popular, more popular overnight. Uh, I think the one that puffed in my head is Big E. So, Dolph Ziggler takes on uh, John Cena for in the ladder match. Dolph Ziggler wins. AJ Lee turns heel with Ziggler. Next night, John Cena faces, I think, Ziggler again. Faces Ziggler again. Excuse me, I paused for a moment. And then this guy came in, this big buff black dude came in and beat up John Cena okay you just beat up John Cena that's the guy so let's put you at a 40 45 range because you just beat up a main eventer you're aligned with a main eventing act so I think that's where you're recent so I was saying I think you know Big E would be the only comparison and popped in my head love to see you guys like other comparisons but no like Edge and stuff I haven't boosted their uh Popularity and all they just been getting a lot of wins. I mean, here. And maybe I did? I don't remember. If I did, he caught me. But I mean, I bumped up to 20. I think that's the ones they were in developmental. Either way, I just love to hear what you guys think about it. So thank you guys so much for watching. Next episode is going to be No Way Out Pay Per View. Ran over by popularity. I mean, it's in my head, so I'm probably still talking about it next week. Who knows? Thank you guys for watching so much. Uh,. Like I said, like I've been saying, WrestleMania 15, it's going to be end of TEW 2013, and then the Raw after, because, uh, you know, WrestleMania is week four, so it'll be April 1999, we're going to start off with TEW 2016, depending if that comes out, one of them, so I get out of school second week in May, by the time this airs, it'll probably be around that time, so right around now, so May 2016, I'll be out of school. If TEW 2016 is out and I update the mod and everything, which I will, I'll probably have it done by the end of the month of January, and then we'll start doing TEW 2016 in May, and the new episodes, I'll have all the TEW 2013 episodes released by now, or May for me, now for you guys, it's confusing me, uh, and then we'll start TEW 2016, and that way I won't try but if I'm in, still in school when it comes out, probably toy around with it a little bit just to see, get a feel for it. Maybe I'll record a new, like an episode or two saying new stuff. You never know. It could come in from school. Just never know. It's, it, you can't record up school is a problem. No headset. Can't take it with me. Problems. But uh, like I said, so around May or June, because it's supposed to come out by end of June. But they said April to June. So I'm thinking it's going to come out in May just because that's how things work in life. So, new episodes of TW 2016, Prelude, Prelude and Attitude Era. Uh, we're are going to start airing May 2016. Thank you guys for watching so much. 15 week win streak versus WCW. 64, no, 60, 60 something to 24. 63, 24? Either way, we're up, kicking our ass for 15 straight weeks now. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you all have. Holy shit 25 minutes i'm sorry Woof, man keep the next one to like six minutes well it's a pay-per-view so we'll do it to we'll keep it around 15 time so if you guys watched all this thank you so much i'll promise to keep these below 15 minutes